This week in WordPress, there are three interesting articles that caught my attention. The first was written by Ryan McHugh, who is the lead developer of the WordPress REST API, and it was published at poststatus.com. It's called A Future API, and in it, he tells the stories of five WordPress users in the year 2020, that's less than five full years from now, who have taken advantage of the expanded capabilities of self-hosted WordPress sites with what he calls the golden age of WordPress REST API. I'll highlight two of those stories. The first story explains how Jack, a YouTube user of the future, will, thanks to the WordPress REST API becoming part of WordPress core, be able to use a simple share button under the share section of a YouTube video to securely post his to his personal self-hosted WordPress site as easy as if he were trying to share to Facebook. Then we have Jill, a mobile developer, who, thanks to the integrated WordPress REST API, is able to create an app that anyone can purchase and use to securely publish photos from their phones directly and seamlessly to their self-hosted WordPress website, with WordPress.org playing the secure middleman between the app and all registered WordPress.org users. This is pretty cool stuff, the kind of stuff that... I gotta admit, I'm pretty excited about personally. I mean, I even wrote an article about this on the Elegant Themes blog back in April, which I'll link to in the video description, along with the other articles that we talk about here. But just to make sure that we're on the same page, uh, let me explain to everybody what the WordPress REST API is before we talk about it. Uh, Basically, the WordPress REST API allows third-party apps, websites, or services to take what are called CRUD actions on a WordPress website. That stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. These actions can be taken on posts, pages, post types, media, comments, and more. There are seemingly endless ways that these can be used, these CRUD actions can be used to achieve really fun and useful things on, on self-hosted WordPress sites. Uh, the examples that I gave above were just two. Now personally, I'm really excited about stuff like, you know, desktop writing applications being linked to WordPress so that I can do my, my writing in things like Scrivener or Final Draft and then publish to WordPress straight from those applications. Maybe even including some markup that allows me to just put in some indicators for how I want, like say, a builder page layout to function when, uh, when it publishes my content and then I have a starter platform right there. That to me would be a really cool use of this, this technology. Um, David, is there anything about WordPress WordPress API that has got you know your brain turning the gears turning well I actually wasn't really thinking about it until you started mentioning it and, and I got to be honest it, it really really excites me as well um, the ability to integrate my website with users you know much like a mobile app or or any device you know such as we have today it sounds like fantastic technology and I'm all for it Awesome. Well, let's get on to the second story. The second article that caught my eye this week was from uh, a blogger and a WordPress developer named Darren Spence. Um, he published it on his personal site, darrenspence.com. The article is called Lessons Learned from Writing a Premium WordPress Plugin. Now, without going into all the details, the lessons that he learned were as follows. Number one, version one is always terrible. Lesson two, you know nothing, Jon Snow about how people will actually use your software. Lesson three, open source is your friend. And finally, lesson four, you'll become an addict. Now, David, you recently launched a plugin that we'll be talking about later. And I know um, I didn't go into a ton of detail with why these lessons uh, <laughs> were what they were for, uh, for Darren, but can you relate to any of the things that he mentioned? Oh, absolutely. We recently launched ours. So we're, we're really fresh into our first plugin launch, but we realized pretty quickly you know, that there were quite a few things that we left out that we could have improved upon. Um, we also, what impressed me the most is that if you would have asked me two years ago, you know, do you think you'll be developing WordPress plugins software? I would have said, absolutely not. There's no way possible, you know, you know, I, I'm not that technical, I can't do it. And I, I, I'm here to tell you do not be afraid to try it. It's not as, as hard as you think it is. Be willing to learn. It's just like learning WordPress. Um, it's, been, it's been a great ride so far. Awesome. Is there uh, a lesson besides the four that he mentioned that, you might, that you've come across? Um, I would say, you know, 
be open to you know i guess he kind of covered it you know he covered yeah. it in open source is your friend so i'm going to say no to that okay no problem well, let's jump to article three uh the third article is actually a massive series of articles that's being produced over at code.tutsplus.com called the beginner's guide to woocommerce now when i say massive i, I really mean massive this post series has 21 posts and counting all of them are about one of the most popular WordPress plugins in the world and the most popular WordPress e-commerce solution. So I feel like I kind of had to mention this this series on this episode because first of all, you, David, you've done um, a lot of work with Divi and WooCommerce and I know a lot of Divi Nation um, are interested in the potential that these two WordPress tools have when, when used together. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what it was like getting started with WooCommerce and, and using it with Divi? It's terrifying. <laughs> it was absolutely terrifying. Um, so it justifies you know, over 21 posts? <laughs> it justifies <laughs> well over 21 posts. Um, what, what my personal experience, I feel like I don't know if I'm the best person to ask this question because my experience with WooCommerce and cutting my teeth with it is with Divi. And, and my experience is that I have found that there has been zero conflict with these two platforms and they work really, really well together. There's not been anything that a client has needed to do or that I've wanted to do with the two platforms that I have not been able to achieve. Uh, there's great documentation out there and um, lots of people willing to help as well. Well, that's all for this edition of This Week in WordPress. If you'd like to read the articles we discussed, you can find them linked in the video description or within the blog post over at elegantthemes.com for Divi Nation Episode 2. Don't forget, if you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook, take a moment to subscribe, follow, like, and or share. It really helps. Thanks.